Let's talk about wind. And uh, wind is not a friend for macro work, especially for if you live in Michigan like I do, which is flat. And once the wind blows, it just blows right across the land. I mean, long ago, the glaciers moved across Michigan like a snowplow, scraped it flat, and with nothing to stop it, no mountains and valleys are few, we have wind more often than not. Wind is not a serious problem for regular photography, but for a macro photographer, it's rough. And for a focus stacker, it's really tough. Since even tiny movement, movements uh, result in halos and other artifacts when you're stacking focus. So the proverbial, proverbial advice for shooting in wind is either don't shoot at all or be patient and wait for a lull. Um, this is good advice, except when you need to shoot five or ten photos each at a different focal point. What happens is that you get two or three shots off and the wind moves the subject or parts of the subject a tiny bit. You're so busy concentrating that you don't even see it because you have your eye to the viewfinder, your hand focusing and your mind busy co coordinating all of this. It's actually a little bit worse than this. The wind doesn't usually just move one blade of grass or whatever. It moves all kinds of things ever so slightly, often too subtle for you to even catch it, but not too subtle for your lens to catch. And the result is that all kinds of stuff moves around. Where, where you figure this out is when you get back home on the computer while you're processing the stacks. Photo after photo has some movement some flaw, all kinds, all kinds of little wind-generated artifacts. Some can be fixed in Photoshop, but a lot are not worth fixing unless you like being a photo touch-up artist for hours at a time. So sometimes I just have to throw up my hands on a photo that I really would like to have. To make things even worse, if you're shooting seasonal flowers, the season doesn't wait for the wind to die down. Many flowers around here are in and gone in a few days. We can schedule time for shooting, but we can't control the wind, which sometimes is strong enough to keep all of the plants dancing for days at a time. So what to do? One thing we can do, although it's not focus stacking, is just use a higher shutter speed, one that stops motion, and just shoot traditional one-shot photos with as much depth of field as you can push the aperture. There's always that. Or if you're shooting something like an entire flower that moves slowly in the wind and can push the shutter speed up so that the whole flower is caught in the movement. Even some small stacks will work because Photoshop will align the whole flower shot by shot. This approach sometimes works, but it seldom works well, and it's hardly worth the effort. Another thing I've tried, um, which is really kind of a futile, is try to make little stakes in the ground around a flower and string little panels of cloth that I made on them in an, att in an attempt to stop the wind from coming in. I even bought some small collapsible car antennae to use as stakes so the whole thing could be portable. But what happened is that the wind came in from above, from below, or from anywhere else that was not covered, and it just did its thing. So this was not a satisfying solution. For really good stack photos of very small flowers, wind is pretty much a deal breaker. Now. There is an awkward but inexpensive way out of this, although it's a real pain in the butt to haul around, and that's a light tent. Light tents are those expandable cubes of translucent material that are used for product photography. They diffuse light over whatever is inside the cube and they, they stop wind cold. Now these light tents are all over eBay and you can get a 24, 30 inch light tent for around 30 bucks. What I do is cut the bottom out of 
one of the flat sides of the tent so that I can use it outdoors. And I dedicate that tent for field work since it's going to be get dinged and smudged and wet and no matter how careful you are, it's, you know, it's going to get dirty. I simply place the tent over the area on the ground where the flowers are and start shooting. The tents even come with like a Velcro cover for the front with a slit for the camera lens if the wind is trying to get in that front direction. So you have five sides that are closed and one side the bottom that's open. These light tents work great for groundwork provided you resign yourself to carting them all over the woods in addition to your tripod camera lenses and whatnot. But it is a solution that's worth trying out if you really want those good stack photos and you have a lot of wind. I even had my daughter sew a skirt on the bottom of the light tent so that it could feather out to further stop the wind from coming in from the bottom. Now recently there is one other thing that I've found and this is something that wind's actually good for and that's it. Many of the new DSLRs also shoot video. Video loves wind. Wind moves the flowers and makes everything sway and move. So this year I'm going to start when it's windy, shooting little tiny short videos. Instead of looking at a picture, think of looking at five or six seconds of a beautiful scene with a little movement. Now I can do that with wind, and so I'm certainly gonna try. And at least some of my DSLRs have really good video. Now, back to these light tents. Um, I'm going to try to show you a picture of an inexpensive light tent that I've cut out the bottom from, or cut out one of the flat sides. And I place the light tent over the subject, as you can see. Like here, the subject is a mullen plant. In this photo, I have partially bent the detachable Velcro front panel back so that I can see into the tent. I usually just poke the camera lens through the slit in the front of the tent or I pull back the Velcro from the top and shoot downward from there. This is my smaller tent. I also have a 48 inch t tent that kids can play in. I use it to place over whole sections of plants like in a field so that I can stop the wind and concentrate on the flowers or the insects on the flowers. This approach I agree is a, like a little extreme and it's very cumbersome, but it does work well. Um, anyway, this is just an idea. These light tents, you know, you can just fold, they fold flat up and can be twisted into a small round package. But as you get to the larger size, it becomes more difficult to twist them into their smallest form. Let's face it, you know, light tents are a hassle to drag around. But if you do, if you happen to live in an area where wind is the default, rather than the exception, like Michigan, your choice is either waiting a long time for the chance to, to, to make a stack photo or using a light tent. And I mean waiting a long time for the wind to die down. And I also mentioned earlier, taking a traditional one-shot photo is not too much of a problem in wind. We just push up the shutter speed or we lower the aperture or both. Forget about getting a stacked photo that day. However, if you stack photos, then wind will seldom let you get more than a couple shots off before it starts to move things around within the frame. Even with one of these collapsible light tents, there's wind. It creeps in through the bottom of the tent. Although a couple of rocks or large sticks or small logs on the edges help to weigh it down. Still, if the wind is up and the flower is delicate or like on an attenuated long stem, you're going to find movement and you'll still be waiting for the wind to die down, although the light tents greatly can speed up an outing. It allows me to get many more photos on a windy day if I really have to have them. As mentioned, I have 24 inch and 48 inch light cubes and usually always have the smaller one in my car. Using light tents can mean that I range in a smaller radius from my car than I otherwise might, but the results are, are more than worth it. With care and setup, 
and you know, often wading the sights if the wind is up, I can shoot fairly large stacks most of the time. Of course, to avoid getting the white sides of the tent in the photo, you'll have to shoot at some angle, either from the slit in front, in the front of the tent, or by pulling back the Velcro strips along the very top of the front. If you can blur the white tent and use it as background, that works well too for some subjects. It can get a pretty nice look. Larger the, the larger the light tent, the more freedom you have in this regard, but, but they're even more awkward to move around. I find that using light tents is well worth the extra effort and hassle. And the larger 48 inch tent can be used in a field of flowers or plants and placed over, as I mentioned, an entire section, allowing me not only to work with the plants, but to remove the wind factor on, on the top of plants like Queen Anne's lace and to concentrate on the many interesting insects that are wandering around on the flower heads. Moving insects and moving flowers due to wind usually manage to make any stack photo almost impossible. But remove the wind and the insects may pause long enough to get some depth from stacking a few shots. Let's talk a little bit about light diffusers. I'm not talking about really reflectors or we can talk about both of them. Diffusers and reflectors you can you know you can buy them easily on eBay at B&H, Adorama and other providers of photography accessories and there are tons of tutorials on the internet about how to use them. I mean there's all kinds of reflectors gold ones and silver ones, white ones, black ones, gold and silver ones but there's usually only one type of opaque diffuser my problem is that with the diffusers currently on the market, um, they're often too opaque, they're too thick. Um, now they, they might be useful in full sun, but I find that for any more delicate sun shade conditions, they block too much light. For example, if, I, if I'm in the woods, there might be some streaming sunlight coming through the forest canopy. Might be, that streaming sunlight might be too harsh and need to be toned down. Now the standard diffuser more or less just creates more shade, another shadow, rather than diffuse the light. But here's a solution. This is what I do. I bought one of the really cheap regular diffusers. I tend to use the 22 inch round diffuser because I can collapse it and with a little effort, effort jam it into my coat pocket, which, which pocket then acts like a carrying case. I then went to Walmart and picked up a somewhat sheer fabric that lets a lot more light through than the original diffuser panel. You know, like silkscreen material is also perfect. Anyway, I stretched this fabric over the open diffuser and temporarily clamped it in place. Then I had my daughter, I can't sew, sew around the rim, fixing the new fabric. Then, when the new fabric was firmly sewed on, I carefully cut out the original translucent panel. The result is a diffusing panel that actually is helpful in tons of situations. I carry it all the time. It folds up and fits in my coat pocket or into the little round bag that it came in. Or I just put it in my camera, holster type camera bag. And um, I just pull it out and it pops open whenever I need it. This, is, this lets a lot of light through. It screens and softens the light so that I don't have glaring patches of sun to blow out the highlights. Often I will prop it up somehow by any means I can, like sticks, holding it, you know, little clips that I bring along, hanging it from its loop uh, from my tripod or from a nearby bush or tree. Anyway, this diffuser acts as a filter to bring down the light to a manageable level.